And I want to start in verse 13 here, reading. It says, Therefore uh, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, they seeing see not, and hearing hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and by seeing you shall see and not perceive. For this, heart, this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and, and should understand with their heart and should, and should be converted. And I should heal them. Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Have you therefore the, hear ye therefore the po, uh, parable of the sower. Okay, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom. And understands it not. Then cometh the wicked one and catcheth that which was sown in his heart. And catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receives seed into the stony place is the same as he that hears the word. And anon with joy receiveth it. I mean, if you know, that you, you, you hear the word, you receive it with joy. Been there, right? Yet he hath no root in himself, he endureth for a while, and then when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Look at that. I want to read this in the Amplified real quick. Verse 20, the one to whom was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one that hears the word and welcomes it with joy. How many of you have seen people come in and they welcome it with joy and then they go out and you wonder what happened to them? <laughs> Yet he has no substantial root in himself, but is only temporary. And when pressure and persecution comes because of the word, immediately he stumbles and falls away, abandoning the one who is the source of salvation. Immediately, it says, when he hears the word and receives it, but immediately he gets offended when persecution comes because of the word. Amen. And it said he abandons the one that is the author. Amen. The one that is the source of salvation, which is Christ Jesus. And the one on whom seed was sown among thorns, this is the one that hears the word, but worries and distractions of the world and the deceitfulness, the superficial pleasures and delight of riches Choke the word and it yields no fruit. It yields no fruit. And the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil. This is the one that hears the word and understands and grasps it. He indeed bears fruit and yields some and hundred times as much as was sown. Some sixty times as much and some thirty times as much. Now we've been talking about sowing and the Word of God and sowing that into good ground and the Word of God is the seed. But we talk, we was talking about financial seed. But you know what? When he's talking about the Word of God, if you don't have the truth of God's Word in some area in your life, then how is it ever going to, amen, how is it ever going to produce anything that you can respond to? So that's why when we sow, the sower sows the Word. And the Word is sown. Now he's talking about different things. Different, different places of the heart, different conditions of the heart. Okay, those that receive it and they're, they're joyful, you know, at first, and then they got no root in themselves, and so they go out and, and they only endure for a little while, and then they're, they're, they're away. They're not there. There's no root. There's no, there's no. But he said that, 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 that that's sown on the good soil. Uh, this is the one that hears the word. Hears the word. Say, I'm hearing the word. And understands the word. Okay. Not only hears it, but he understands it, and indeed bears fruit, and it yields some hundred, some sixty, some thirty, uh, amen. And that's why he said, my people are destroyed, help me Lord here, for a lack of knowledge, uh, and uh, we pray that we don't have a lack of knowledge here, that's why we, we teach in these areas concerning uh, the kingdom, uh, but we know that the 
the, the word is, has to be sown and it has to be watered and it has to, amen, it has to be fertilized, it has to be cultivated, amen. And the fruit of that is the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. But help me with this, Lord. I can see it. Help me with this. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the evidence, the evidence of things not seen. It's the evidence of things not seen. It's the, ev the manifestation of things not seen. A life of faith can be seen. Amen. A life of faith that somebody believes the word of God, has the word of God, believes the word of God, can be seen in somebody's life because it's manifested in the natural. It's manifested in their life. And where do you say that is? Well, he that is in Christ is a new creation in Christ. So if somebody says they are in Christ and they are a new creation in Christ, that means old things has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All of a sudden, the manifestation of the word of what's happened inside of him, which was born again, the spirit being reborn, and the word of God being in him, and, and, and then all of a sudden fruit coming up, which is the manifestation of a life that looks different as they, uh, you can see it. You can see a life that has changed. You can see a life, you might see, you know, somebody with tattoos, doesn't mean, doesn't mean that, but you might see a scarred up body, tattoos, whatever it is, and all of a sudden you see that life, they say, I'm a new creation in Christ, and all of a sudden you watch, they start talking different. They start walking different. They start going to place. They start wanting to go to church, never wanted to go to church before. They, 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 before they'd be wanting to go to a bar or they'd be wanting to go to you know, a party or whatever it may be and all of a sudden you see that life starts to shift that life starts to see that's the manifest state that's, that's, the, that's the manifest present that's the manifestation uh, the faith is the substance of things hope for the evidence it's the evidence the evidence the evidence of, of, of something that's happened inside something that's happened in the spirit that's the evidence because he said you know what I wouldn't use my body no more for wickedness, which is the tool. I would use it as a slave to righteousness, a slave to do right. I would submit my body. You know, he said, you're the body, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so my body, I yield to him like I am right now. I'm yielding to him to be used and use my body for righteousness and use my body to serve God now and not to do wickedness with it. A lot of people are using their bodies to do wickedness. They're using their bodies for fornication. They're using their bodies for all this stuff right here. And they've got the right to use their body the way they want to. But God said this, that, 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 you know, that, that when, you, when, you, when you submit to him, that's what crucifying flesh is, not doing what I want to do, but submitting myself to the Father's will. Amen. But that, take, that, that good ground is that born again, that born again spirit, and a spirit and a heart that you've kept clean. Okay, that takes every day walking with God. That keeps keep that stuff out of it that, that chokes up. He said right here, what would happen? What, the distractions, the worries? Listen, this right here will choke your word every time. The word's getting in you. The word's in you. But watch this. He says this in verse 22. The distractions of the world, the worries. How many of you have been in worry before? How many of you have had distractions? The enemy will send distractions every time to try to distract you. So these are, these are the ones that was sown. This is the word that was sown that heard the word. But then the cares of this world. And, it all, and that's why he said don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. So the distractions of the world. The deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness. The superficial pleasures and delight of riches. Choke the word. Chokes it and it yields no fruit. Chokes the word. The word's been sown in good ground, though. That's what produces 30 and 60, 100-fold return. That's what produces. Seed time and harvest is in every area of life. If you want love, you sow love. If you want generosity, you sow generosity. If, if, if you sow, you, you, you're the one that does that. You know, acts of kindness, that's what we call it. I could say sow and reaping, but it's acts of kindness. If you're kind to people, you know, usually kindness comes back to you. When I've seen people that's very rude and very, even Christians, I've seen Christians that's very rude to people and all that. And nine times out of ten, all their stories are is how people's been rude to them or how they went to this place and this, this person did that. And then when I'm around them long enough and I see how they treat people, I'm like, well, there you're, there's your problem. It's you. You're the problem. I'm not saying you won't have issues with people. But when, I, when I'm with somebody and, I, and all they talk about is, well, they, they, they yelled, they did this, they did that, they did this, and then I watch their life and how they are with people, and I, I see and it's pretty evident to why that's happening to them. 
Because I, you know, most of the time people don't do that. So if you're if you're if you're a kind person, I'm saying people take advantage. I get that. But if you learn to sow kindness, you're going to get kindness. If you learn to be kind to people and be be humble with people, you know, a lot of that you'll get in return. Okay. And uh, so, it, it, uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word, and and we understand that anything that you get, faith is a currency. It's a currency in the kingdom. Okay. It's it's the way that we we get anything. Faith in what though? What is faith? It's a title deed. Okay, he said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Well, it's, what is the keys to the kingdom? It's the authority, but it's the word of God. It's his promises. It's his word. Now, you have the authority to use the keys to access what he's made available for you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not one day, when you get to heaven, you're going to have a glorified body. You, you ain't going to need to access none because you're going to be there. Now, there's a lot of people might have to go into a special place in heaven and they might have to be taught because they wasn't taught here. So they might have to go and be, I don't know, I don't want to get into all that. But when you'll have a glorified body and you won't need healing in heaven. You won't need to access God's healing power in heaven. You won't need to walk in divine health in heaven because you're going to have a glorified body and there's going to be no sickness. When you get to the third heavens, what I mean, there's going to be no sickness. There's going to be no night. There's going to be no sin. There's going to be no... You're not going to have to worry about those things or be concerned about any of that then. What you've got to, to learn is to live now and what God's purpose for your life, what, what His purpose is and, and for us as a church, what His purpose is for you, what that is now. What are we here for? What's my purpose? Why do I get up every day? Why do I go every day? Why do I preach every day? Why do I try to tell as many people as I can about this Jesus that I know? Why am I here? Well, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he's given you keys to the kingdom. He's given you the access, the word of God to be able to access the promises Amen. And, and, and to live victorious in this life. Victorious over the devil. Praise God. To keep him under your feet where he belongs. That's why we give you the keys, the knowledge that you can, that you can access, that you can keep him where he belongs in every area of your life. Where the, he said you're redeemed from all of the curse of the law. Not some of the curse of the law. He said we're redeemed from all of the curse of the law. Now... To say, well, there's no curse working in anybody's life as a Christian because they're redeemed from it would be not truthful statement. Because that's not true. You, you, there's a lot of curses walking in, and death working in people's lives. Well, the wages of sin, let me help you with this. The wages of sin is death. The wages, the penalty, the, the, the fruit, let me say, the fruit of sin is death. That's why he said if you sow to the flesh, of the flesh you're going to reap corruption. You're going to reap death. If you sow to the Spirit, of the Spirit you'll reap eternal life. You'll reap everlasting life. You'll reap relationship. You'll reap life in that area. You'll access life in that area. When you learn to respond financially, you're going to learn to start accessing life financially into your situation and into your life. You're going to learn to walk victorious in God's system and not the world's system. Praise God. You're going to learn how to do this when you learn the keys and when you learn to respond and you learn to believe. You learn that you have a, a part to play. It's not just lay down and whatever will be will be. Walk and whatever happens, happens. No, that's not the way it goes. I've got a part to play, but God's with me, working with me, and He's for me today. And the angels are encamped about me because I fear Him today and I acknowledge them. And the angels are encamped about you as you walk every day. And you pray those prayers and you acknowledge His truth and His Word. Amen. And you learn to get these keys and you learn to walk victorious in your life. And you learn to keep the enemy where he belongs, under your feet. Praise God. Keep sin. Oh, that's not, I mean, that's the low. I mean, we know keep sin out of our life. But man, I tell you what. Praise God. He said the wages, the wages, the penalty of sin is death. The penalty of that is death. 
It's death. And every, it, it, listen, and, and, and a lot of times we look at that word and we say the penalty of sin is death. When we think death, we think, well, that means I've left my body and I'm no longer on the earth. It's not necessarily true.
and discipled as, and conquer as we can get. See, there's purpose. There's purpose. Amen. God didn't call you a defeated foe. The defeated foe is the enemy. Amen. He's called you more than conquerors. Amen. He didn't call you to quit. He didn't call you quitters. He called you to persevere. He called you to endure. He called you to go. He called you to walk by faith and not by sight. He called you to trust Him beyond everything else. He called you to be that. Amen. He called you as a son and as a daughter. Amen. Inheritors. As He is, so are we in this world. And y'all quiet tonight. As he is, so are we. So are we in this world. I'm going to bring it to a close. Good ground. Keep good ground. Keep good ground. Don't let the cares of this life. It's easy to worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. I got there today. I was just sitting there thinking about it. And I had to change my mind. Because I was thinking about something that wasn't even here yet. But I was thinking about it coming though. I'm being honest. Transparent with you. I was sitting back there and I was praying. I started thinking about, you know, the next two days. I was thinking, well, this, this, this. No. Tomorrow, worry about itself. Today. Amen. Be all we can be today. I've got a mission to accomplish. I've got to stand up here. I've got to preach and teach tonight. That's what I'm preparing for. That's what I did all day. So listen, online, listen, I pray that you guys have been blessed. If you're watching, listen, share this video. I pray that it helps you. I, I pray that you got a new revelation of, of, of God's will uh, for us as the body of Christ, for us as Christians, and that we're not a defeated church, but we're a seated church. But we've also got a part to play to walk victorious in Christ. He got the victory, and He wants us to walk in it. He bought redemption and paid for it. He wants us to walk in it. That gives Him glory. When we walk redeemed, that gives the Redeemer glory. We didn't redeem ourselves. You didn't buy yourself. He said you were bought with a price. Therefore, my life, your life, ain't even your own no more. My life ain't even my own no more. Because if it was, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. But my life, one day I submitted to Him. I surrendered to Him and He called me to preach. And I just obeyed. I said, oh, Lord, I'll do it. I ran from it for about six months, seven months. Finally surrendered. I got so miserable. Finally surrendered. I said, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. How am I going to talk? I can't even get up in front of people. How am I going to stand up? Or I couldn't even get up in front of people. I'd start shaking and I'd lock up and couldn't even talk. I could talk to anybody on the street. But if you, if you said, okay, get out in front of these people and teach them, I would get up there and lock completely up. I was like, there's no way. I can't, I can't do that. Ain't no way. God said it. He didn't, ask you, he didn't ask you to be qualified. He called you. He chose you for such a time as this. He didn't choose you what you could accomplish on your own. He chose you to accomplish something that only He could do through you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to close with that. Listen, we love you guys in Jesus' mighty name. And He loves you more than anything.